Hi, and uh, welcome to our webinar today on what matters to you, turning ideas into purposeful action. Uh, we're really pleased to have you joining us today. Uh, my name is Claire Morrison and I'm the Director for Community Engagement. Uh, so uh, it's my job to do a bit of housekeeping to start off with. Um, so um, can we please ask you, first of all, to help with sound and picture quality uh, during the presentation? Um, we've switched your camera off um, and we've set your mic to mute. So um, if you can use the chat box at the web webinar to share any questions and comments um, and we'll pick those up within the Q&A at the end. Um, and also we'll switch the mic and cameras back on then. Uh, we'll be sharing the presentation slides um, and the recording of the webinar on our website. Um, and you can also find out more about our upcoming events um, and uh, book online for them uh, on our website as well, which is www.hisengage, all one word, uh, .scot.events. Um, if you've any questions or have any technical difficulties during the webinar, please contact Linda, who's lynda.young14 at nhs.scot. Um, and finally, um, you may have seen um, that there is a single question poll within the chat. Um, uh, if you could uh, uh, take part in that, that would be brilliant. Um, so I suppose... Um, just as a bit of an introduction, I'm absolutely delighted to be here um, today. Um, I have followed the journey of what matters to you from the really early days around, I guess, about 10 years ago when it was an exciting new idea in hospitals um, that was being presented at a conference. And I even had the real privilege of meeting the first the person who first coined the phrase. Um, and what's been fabulous um, about that journey is really how it spread. So from those really initial kind of uh, awards that it was being used in to it being used in all healthcare settings and by so many different professionals um, and indeed all around the world. And it's fantastic to see um, that person-centered um, approach being embedded into everyday care. Um, last week, I, I heard about how uh, What Matters To You is being used in Newcastle to understand how to improve um, staff well-being um, and how that was working. So I'm massively um, excited and looking forward to hearing the experience and reflections uh, from our fantastic speakers today. Um, and so it's my job to introduce our first speaker, um, Sean Mayer, um, Strategic Advisor for uh, Person-Centred Care and Improvement at Scottish Government. So over to you, Sean. Thank you. OK, great stuff. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that slight hiatus there. So I'm not going to say much. I am just here to say that, um, like Claire, I've been following along and trying to get involved with this and support the What Matters to You movement and approach uh, from its outset. It's been a really exciting journey and still lots of potential um, uh, benefit and uh, good things to come from adopting this approach, if you like, to um the way we do things i suppose a couple of words before before i introduce um kevin who's going to speak to you in a moment or two about what what matters to you isn't and then a couple of thoughts about what it is so um in terms of what what matters to you isn't it isn't a government program uh, it isn't a program of any sort in fact um that one of the the great things about what matters to you is it's something that has that has um, grown up from within the health and care and other uh, um, areas of the public sector. It's a movement. Um, and I think what it demonstrates is a shared um, desire and shared values to perhaps rebalance our health and care system um, to focus uh, more um, or to return to a focus that's more uh, on uh, the relational elements of care, the things that really matter, um, the humanity that connects us all. The other thing that it's not is um, a script. So what matters to you is not a script for a question. In fact, that question, what matters to you in that, in that framing is rarely the right um, question, rarely the right way to frame the question. Um, when, when adopting this approach, it's about getting to know the person themselves in the context of their own life and then tailoring the question to that person that's in front of you. And that doesn't mean you need a great biography about the individual. You just need a few moments of connection to understand who they are, um, what's going on for them, and then you can frame the question, you know, in a way. And we're going to see some examples of that um, uh, today. In fact, you've got one 
in the poll that's in the chat. You know, when you have a good day, what is it that makes a good day for you? That's a what matters to you question. So what is what matters to you then? Uh, I suppose it's the opposite of those things I've just been saying. But what does it do? What what matters to you does in the first instance is it humanizes. So it it builds trust and connection between two human beings. And I think that um, in the busyness of our modern health and care system and that many of the processes and things that we do are very sort of industrialized. There's a tendency to dehumanize and to lose sight of the other human being that's in front of you. None of us want to do that, um, but it does happen sometimes. And um, the way we do things doesn't always help us to to um, focus on the person uh, who's in front of us. So, and, and that connection, that human connection builds trust. And we know that trust is absolutely vital in respect of getting the best possible outcomes for people. So that's the first and most important thing. It's a humanizing um, factor. Uh, it, it, it just stops us, gives us a pause and helps us to reconnect with the with the humanity and uh, the core values, perhaps, perhaps which brought us into into healthcare in the first place. And the second thing that it does is it helps us to figure out what we might be able to do with someone to to help them um, deal with the, the problem or the challenge that they're facing at any given time. But the important thing to do to remember when you're doing that is that listening in itself is an intervention. So as as healthcare professionals in particular, we often feel we have to do something. We have to fix something. Um, and sometimes that can cause uh, more harm than good. Um, and we need to get into the frame of thinking or the way of thinking and remembering that just listening is an intervention. Often people face incredibly complex challenges and there isn't necessarily anything we can do in that moment to help. But just knowing that you've been heard and listening uh, can have a huge, po hugely positive impact on somebody's resilience and ability to, to cope with the situation that they're in. So yeah, that's enough from me. Uh, we want to get on to the stuff. Uh, we want to hear about uh, the, the people who are really doing this in, the, in, in their day to day work. Um, and before we get to them, I'm just going to introduce you Kevin Ward, who is the is a, he's a manager at Community Engagement Scotland, and he looks after some of the What Matters to You support that's available out there and he's going to tell us a bit about what the team there um, can and can't do uh, to help us with the What Matters You work. So over to you Kevin. That's great, thanks Sean. I'll just very briefly just share my screen. Just give me a wee second. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, that's great, thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so as Sean says, um, lovely to see so many on the on the line today. Uh, my name is Kevin Ward um, and I'm an area teams manager within the community engagement directorate within his. Um, I'm also involved in the What Matters to You work as well and work closely with Sean, um, who you, you've just heard from, and also Tommy, um, who you, you'll hear um, is one of the guest speakers this afternoon as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run through a couple of slides. Um, the first one being about what our, our role is within What Matters to You within the community engagement directorate. And also, also some of my reflections uh, as well. Um, then I'm going to pass on to the, the three amazing speakers that we've got here today, um, and, and they're going to be talking about the, the, the amazing work that they've been involved in, um, you know, around what matters to you. So I'm um, really excited to hear from them as well. So the first bullet point there is, is, is supporting you in your what matters to you improvement journey, and I think that's the most important point in terms of our role. Everybody's at different stages um, when it comes to what matters to you. Um, some are, are starting out um, and, and we're noticing that leading up to the day itself and, and others are, are you know, really embedding this within their day to day practice. So, you know, we are always really keen to, to support you in, in whatever way we can. And, and we're also really keen to hear from you as well. So so please do get in touch. Um, a couple of other kind of key points you know, in terms of our role is, is we've got the, the What Matters to You website. Um, so, so please do have a wee, a wee look at that as well. We're, we're continuously changing that. Um, and we'll continue to do so over the next few months as well. And um, so, yeah, please do go over and look. There's a lot of resources on there and quite a lot of content as well to, to support you in, in, you know, embedding this within your day to day practice. We're also involved in, in raising awareness of, of the What Matters to You movement um, via social media. And um, so we've got platforms on, on Facebook and Twitter. So please do follow us and, and there'll be a lot of, of content leading up to, to What Matters to You Day on the 6th of June as well. So. Um, yeah, please do follow us and, and, and share your stories as well in, in terms of the hashtag um, WMTY uh, 2023. 
over the next couple of months, we're also planning to have a, an e-bulletin to send out to our distribution list to, to share some of the kind of really good pieces of work that, that are taking place across the, the country and also internationally as well. I mean, there's there's incredible amount of work going on, so we're really keen to, to share that um, as best we can and, and inspire people to, you know, replicate some of the really good pieces of work that are going on. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you keep you in the loop there. We're always looking for case studies, so um, a wee bit of a plea here. Um, it's great to see so many on the line. So if there are really, really good pieces of work going on, then please do get in touch with us. We're always really keen to hear about the, you know, the amazing work that's going on across Scotland, uh, UK and internationally as well. Um, I don't know if it's just a Scottish thing, but maybe it's something we're, we're not um, comfortable doing at times is, is sharing the amazing work that's going on. But please do stick your head above the, the parapet and, and get in touch, you know, and, and we're happy to, to support with that as well and, and, you know, really showcasing a lot of these great pieces of work that are going on. Over the next couple of months as well, um, we're, we've been doing a bit of training internally um, and, and that will continue um, in terms of, of, of giving a really good overview of what matters to you. Um, so we're developing some some slides to support workshops taking place. So, so what I would say there as well is, is, is watch this space and, and, you know, please do get in touch if you think that would be of use. Um, you know, the, the key thing there is, is a really good overview of, you know, and, and Sean kind of touched on it at the start there, what it is and, and what it isn't, you know, and that's something I would have found really useful um, when, I, when I started within Healthcare Improvement Scotland probably kind of five, five and a half years ago. Um, it's really important to, you know, kind of alleviate a lot of those misconceptions around what matters to you is and what it isn't. So, you know, please do get in touch off the back of that. We also provide a bit of support in terms of the administration and support to the National What Matters To You Networking Group. Um, there'll be some people on the call who, who sit on this group and, and, and we're really, you know, it's a really key role there that the National Networking Group to, to drive this agenda um, Scotland wide and, and really kind of joining up as best we can um, from, from the boards and the partnerships to all of the other organisations across the whole of Scotland. So um, we'll see how that progresses over the next few months, but we're always keen to make sure that we're, uh, you know, um, communicating out to, to everybody about all the kind of key pieces of work that are going on um, within what matters to you. So the day itself, um, I've, I've put a wee bit there as well. So it's the 6th of June. Um, so it's a really exciting uh, day coming up and there's going to be loads of activity leading up to it. So, you know, as I said, please do share your story um, and, and please do get in touch as well. There's the, the, the generic uh, email at the bottom there and, and also mine. So, um, yeah, please do get in touch. Very briefly, I just wanted to kind of run through a couple of things and, and these will come up as well with it when the speakers are talking some of the kind of key some of my key reflections over the last year in terms of my involvement and what matters to you is the little things that go a long way when it comes to you know person-centered care as a whole but you know specifically around what matters to you we we'll shouldn't be doing a, a video um a kind of what matters to you video in partnership with the alliance and nhs borders um and, and the little things there are you know in a, in a very random way geez and we're hoping the content's not going to be cheese, but um, let me elaborate on that. Um, my, my colleague Sarah, um, her sister went in for a, a minor you know, operation um, a few months ago, and um, Sarah's sister um, has, has a learning disability, um, and, and she, re she received absolutely fantastic care down at NHS Borders in terms of, of the surgery um, from start to finish. Um, the learning disability liaison team, the anaesthetist, the consultant, the surgeon, um, amazing support. But one of the things she wanted when she was coming around from anaesthetic was cheese. And, and when she came around, there was cheese everywhere, came from everywhere. So it's the little things like that that go a really long way. And, you know, I'm very sure there's thousands of different stories, uh, you know, length and breadth of the country that, that you know, really get into detail of, of the little things that can go, you know, a really long way um, to, you know, produce some really good person-centred care. Another big thing for me is the enthusiasm and passion for what matters to you. I've been I've been really struck by that. Um, it's it's incredible. Um, so what I would say there is is let's continue you know to build on that because there's no doubt about it. There's amazing pieces of work, um, and let's you know share these and, and celebrate these as best we can. Another big thing is this embedding what matters to you into day to day practice, and and, and some teams are, are really you know doing this um, day in day out. 
Um, we are trying to do this internally as well within the community engagement directorate. So some of the pieces of work we're involved in, whether it's some of the gathering views pieces of work we're involved in, citizens panel, um, we recently did a, a gathering views piece of work in chronic pain, and there was a what matters to you related question within that. The feedback from the individuals that were involved in it was was fantastic, and they were, they were just genuinely really chuffed to be asked you know, and being listened to, you know, what was important to them. So these things can go a long, long way. The other key thing is they've been embedded within strategies and policy. Um, team meetings, one-to-ones, let's really build on this and embed it, you know, and in many ways we can. The other big thing for me is, is, is it's all about relationships, you know, and that's the key thing here, and that's what, what, what matters to you is, is, you know, essential, um, you know, day-to-day -day life, um, and, and when when we, when we get busy, that's that's where um, you know what matters to you is that really good reminder because at times we can you know <laughs> I'll do it in my personal life as well. We all do it. You know when when life is busy, we do tend to at times forget to listen and, and and really listen you know to to individual needs and wants, whether that's a colleague, a friend, a partner, whatever that may be, or a patient. You know, it's really essential to just have that constant reminder, and I feel you know what matters to you is essential to that. One of the other big things for me as well is 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 you know the, the kind of silo work inside of things, and, and and within his at the moment, you know, a big drive is is the one team approach. Um, I've I've noticed that you know a lot of different teams will get in touch from different boards, um, and they're doing some fantastic words you know work when it comes to to what matters to you. You know, we've got a role there to try and build this. You know join us up as best we can and, and make sure that we're avoiding that silo working. Um, you know, so within his, in terms of what matters to you, I'm really keen to, to build those links with some of the other directorates and we've made good strides with that with the, the person centre design improvement team, excellence and care team, and we'll continue to build on that. So, yeah. so I've got Danny um, from NHS Borders. Um, Danny, I'll let you introduce yourself and then let you crack on with your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Kevin. And I'm just going to share my presentation in the background and we will get started. So hopefully that's all working for you guys. So today I'm going to be discussing uh, the What Matters to You templates and what we've been trying to do within NHS Borders to make life a little bit better for our patients that we care for. In NHS Borders, um, in terms of the project that we're doing for what matters to you. There's two members of staff. So there's myself, Danny Bell. I'm the quality improvement facilitator um, focused towards mental health and learning disabilities. And I've been working in collaboration with um, a colleague called Christine Proudfoot, who's the Alzheimer Scotland Dementia Nurse Consultant, um, who focuses on people, patients within our border specialist dementia unit. And this example is based on a patient, um, albeit it's anonymized for very obvious reasons, of a patient that was in the ward um, and unfortunately had to be admitted into the main wards and the experience of that care where if we had a template that was reflective and was effective in her in her transmission, actually this would have made such a difference to this patient's care. So the background of what we're doing. So in 2022, I was approached by Christine to lead and improve to you templates that were in use within our border specialist medicine unit within NHS borders. The current template that we'll get onto later in this presentation did not provide enough uh, information to make any meaningful improvements to patient care. So what we did off, off that was we developed some key points or some aims um, that we wanted to look at when we're, produce, when we're developing uh, a new template, something that we could ground ourselves with. Um, so the two aims we looked at as the main sections were must be clear, so be visual and easy to understand, so patients, relatives and carers can input into the template and information is easy to find. And second, it must be transferable. Be transferred between wards, care establishments, even incorporated into person-centered care plans and be, be easy enough to understand so that we're not having to describe what the template means or what to find and how it works because that undo undoes all the hard work that we've done to get to this stage. So why did we need this change? Well, in 2022, a patient whom for this example we'll call Stacy, became unwell and had to be transferred from the border specialist dementia unit 
to one of the main wards in the Border General Hospital. Stacey had dementia, and as the staff in the ward were not special in dementia care, um, she became very disorientated and confused, which resulted in her deteriorating further. Um, the staff did not know what to say to Stacey to put her at ease, and they knew nothing about who she was. So there was information held in the patient's notes about, you know, the care that she needed, but there was nothing about her, who she was an individual, what were her likes and dislikes, and something that made her human rather than just a patient. So what did we have already? So we did have a, a version of a what matters to you, albeit uh, it was called what, what matters to me, template that was being used within the, within the Border Specialist Dementia Unit. Uh, which was the What Matters to You Daisy, which if you've looked on the What Matters to You website, you'll have seen a version of that. Again, this is all anonymized, but this is the template that was used and the information is this similar to what was used in the ward for this patient. So what can we see? <clears throat> we see here we have the What Matters to You Daisy. So for this patient, Stacey, there's a lot of information held on this, albeit it's handwritten and some may be able to read it, some might not. But in some of those, what do we actually get from that? You can see in some of the box, some of the, the petals, as they're called, um, you know, wants to be pain free, sorry. to be clean, sorry. tidy. Sorry? Sorry to interrupt, but should your slides be moving along? They should be. Are they not they're moving along on the main on page? The first, the first page. Sorry about that. No, I'm glad you've, you've, oh, you've thanks, just broke up. Yeah, Otherwise, I would get, <laughs> is it sliding yeah, across now? No, no. That's us now. Is that yeah. It is now. There yeah. we go. So <laughs> it's just a big talk and all on the first page and the background that was flipping to the screen, but it wasn't changing. So apologies for that. So just very quickly to recap. Um, so yes, about us, I'm Danny Brother, the Quality Improvement Facilitator for Mental Health and Learning Disabilities, um, working in collaboration with Christine Proudfoot. Uh, went through the slide um, I just spoke about, which was the background um, and so, as I said before, in November 2022, I was approached by Christine to lead improvements in the What Matters to You templates uh, because they weren't fit for purpose and they weren't giving us what we needed to to provide care for our patients. These are the aims that I've just described, but albeit it wasn't changing pages, so uh, you wouldn't have actually seen any of this information, albeit I could have seen it on my screen, which uh, wasn't ideal. But again, those are two aims for you, so it must be clear and visible, visible and easy to understand and must be transferable between locations, between wards, care establishments, and even incorporated into patient-centered care plans to ensure that we're given the best patient care that we can. So this is the background on the, <clears throat> why, why did we need this change? So again, this patient who we'll call, St we'll call Stacy was transferred from our border special dementia unit, um, full in deterioration and deteriorated further while in one of our acute wards, mainly because um, the, the patient was getting very distressed, um, was asking questions about family members and pets, and no one in the ward knew what, what or who these people were, so it made her increasingly, um, increasingly distressed. And we're almost at the slide where I thought we we're up to and the page wasn't changing. So what do we have already? So this is the What Matters to You, Daisy. And as I said, this is a very similar um, uh, design of what was being used in the ward for this patient. Um, everything's been anonymized, but this, and this information is the same as what was being used for this patient. So on, on this, on this Daisy and some of the petals, you can see at the very top, um, to be heard and wishes respected, to be clean, tidy, presentable. And bottom right, it says to be pain-free or to be free from pain. You know, that's all very important information, but what does that actually tell you? You know, everyone wants to be heard and wishes to be respected. Everyone would like to be clean, tidy, presentable. Everyone would like to be pain free. That doesn't give you any information or based on for Stacey. What does that mean to her? How does this matter? And how does this humanize who she is as a person? Um, there should uh, in a second, there'll be a poll coming up and that poll is to look at so I'm looking to a different page and I can't see them now because I've because the, the screen jump wasn't working. So the information is very vague and it is impossible to find the information on there. Now the poll, the poll should be coming up as, I, as we speak um, to get your feedback on based on this template that you can see in front of you. 
how satisfied would you be with a nurse or a carer looking after your sister, mother, daughter, brother or relative? Based on this information at the at the bedside. So that poll should come up and if I give you a few seconds just to complete that and then we'll go through um, the rest of. So, what did we need to do? We needed something that was going to be clear, concise, visually appealing and easy to understand, thinking back to those aims we just discussed. So easy that anyone could use it. And more importantly, anyone could understand the information that was held on that, that document. So we began to develop a new template to meet all these requirements, and we soon began testing this within the Border Specialist Dementia Unit. So this is what we developed in the borders. So with this template, uh, it's quite clear in uh, the, the sections for who, who is important to me, where you can put relatives, pets, any family members, food and drink, especially if there's any foods that the patient doesn't like. So it's clear to members of staff if they're doing things like meal meal rounds, they know um, what to and what not to offer, how the patient gets around, interests and hobbies, self-care, and what else is important to know. And this is really good for capturing the history of the patient, especially in, with complex patients who, who have Alzheimer's or dementia that necessarily can't remember what happened in the past. So next we'll go on to what this template looked like once it was put into practice. Now this is for the, exact, for the same patient, for Stacey, and this is what it looked like with the exact same person filling the template in for the same patient, but based on this new template. So from this, you'll see the the person that filled it out actually used um, clip arts to really drive home this, the message around what is important to them and what matters to them. So you'll see there's a section, there's a picture of a dog and it says, my dog's called Stu. Picture of an adult with a child, it says Andy's my son, his wife and kids. Her partner, Jim, and her brother, Steve in Texas, who's a hairdresser. You can even see in the food and drink section at the very bottom, it says dislikes, spicy food, and no to toast. So it's very clear if, if anyone's speaking to this patient or if you're going to do food and drink, you'd, you wouldn't go in and say, would you like toast this morning? Because it's very clear that patient doesn't like that. And that may be something that if you say that repeatedly, the patient may get distressed because they haven't been asked the same thing over and over again. So in a second, another a second poll will come out, and I swear this will be the last poll um, for the for this presentation. That based on this template now, using the same analogy as before, how satisfied would would, would you be with a nurse, a doctor, a carer providing care for a relative of yours, using this information, providing that. You know, just imagine that Stacy is your relative. I'll give you a couple of seconds to complete that and then I'll complete uh, finish off the last couple of slides. Thank you. So in terms of the feedback, there is something up there that's meant to say feedback, but it's not working, but it was working when I tried it earlier on, so apologies for that. Um, we received positive feedback from staff in the Border Special Defence Unit, in the ward which Stacey was admitted to, and relatives who found the new version simpler to read and could easily identify ways to calm Stacey should she get distressed. From this, they found, as a few points, they could quickly see that she liked tea, that her dog was called Stu, they could see what her routines were, what her dislikes were, and staff were able to tailor their care to the individual based on that information without having to trawl through notes or go through patient notes to find that information, which is really important for, for Stacey. So what's next for us? Well, this template has now been rolled out to the entire of the Border Specialist Dementia Unit. 
We have developed a training guide on how to complete this, the document so staff have a reference point, especially if they've not completed this before. We've also developed a larger template that spans over two pages. Now that was specifically for more complex patients. Um, so people, patients that have um, dementia or Alzheimer's where they have a lot of information does need to be recorded. Uh, but the, the color coding and themes in terms of the food and drink section, the what matter, you know, who's important to me, the color scheme stays the same so that it is transferable. If it goes to a ward, they can clearly see the red section is what's who's important to me. And lastly, we've begun a new test of change within our, one of our acute wards in the main Border General Hospital, which has already seen positive feedback from staff, patients and relatives. Thank you. That's good, Danny. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'll now hand over to, to Victoria Richmond um, from NHS Tayside. Thank you, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Now I'm just about to share my screen, hopefully. She says. And I'm hoping everybody can now see my slide. So as the slide suggests, I'm Vicky Richmond. I am the Surgical Acute Frailty Team AMP here in Nine Wells in Tayside. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our journey with the What Matters to You movement. So I felt it would be wrong to start this session without telling you what matters to me. So as you can see, I've got a picture there of my wonderful mum and my late dad, Jenny and Alec. I was their only child and I think it's safe to say they brought me up fairly well. I'm a bit headstrong, just like dad was, and kind and caring, just like mum. And they always told me to go and get what I want in life. And as you'll see, that's a theme that keeps reappearing. My poor suffering husband who takes the brunt of a bad shift. Yet he still sticks beside me. We're 10 years married and hopefully many more to go. My greatest achievements are my two daughters, Charlotte and Beth. They drive me absolutely crazy at times and they completely zap me of energy with their sleepless nights. However, couldn't be more fiercely proud of them and enjoy every minute spent with them. And then the last what matters to me is my team. You'll hear people say they work with a great team, but I truly work with the best team in Scotland. I'll not try to make you too jealous. So, COVID didn't come without its issues, but I'm not going to bore you with that today. However, we tried to build our teams back up from it. We decided in 2022 that our What Matters To You campaign should focus upon our staff. How can we ask staff to ask patients what matters to them if we can't ask what matters to our staff? If we don't want know what matters to who we work with, then how do we truly value them? So there's some initial hesitation from our senior nursing team. However, they could see it would have benefit. It allows staff to have some education on the What Matters to You movement, but also know the value and the feeling of what it's like to be asked what matters to you. There was then hope that if we asked the staff, they would in turn ask the patients. And we may also be able to change any negatives to make our life better for our staff. Sounds pretty simple. So we had a collection method of a short chat over a tea trolley teaching style. Then a drop box for the staff to put in what matters to them so it was fully anonymised. We collected the items and placed these into six key themes. These came out as communication, teamwork, staffing, patient centred care, leadership and family and personal items. I'm not here to start fights today, but there's some mentions of various different football teams, but they were important to someone at that stage. 25% mentioned about teamwork and the work family and a positive teamwork relationship. And we need to continue to embrace this and nurture it. Our staff hold the key to person-centred care and we have to ensure as leaders that we value and support our teams. I'm going to urge you now to read last year's report as we placed it as part of the case study in there and it saves me repeating something that perhaps you've already read. Now, we could have left our journey there. However, the headstrong thing that I mentioned earlier, I have to keep pushing it. So I was fortunate enough to hear Tommy speak again in 2022 and left that day feeling inspired again to be a nurse and perhaps proud that something that I'd maybe forgotten. And I went home that night and I picked up my eldest from school, Charlotte. If she has some health conditions that throw a few curveballs in her way, 
However, she was so excited to come out of school that day with what she called her proud cloud. It was things that she was proud. And on hers was that today was a good day, that she was courageous and that she could try again. So I was fiercely proud of her, but also a little bit heartbroken. However, it did make me realise that we should all be proud of what we achieve. I strongly believe we all manage to achieve great things, but yet we focus upon things we didn't complete or things that we wish we had done. I believe our staff do ask what matters to our patient by engaging in conversations while checking blood pressures, carrying out personal hygiene, but we don't always acknowledge it. Fundamentally, it's simply about finding out about our patients, what and who makes them tick. Ask, listen, and then doing. It really is that simple. The cloud spoke to me. We've come through a bit of a storm with COVID. The cloud and the rainbow is now coming out and showing the world what we can achieve. So I tried to set about to do some miserable teaching, actually, showing clips of Tommy's great work from the Alliance page in the wards while giving my participants their own clouds and the ward a cloud to be proud of. Perhaps on a bad day, this would fall out of their bag and make them realise just how brilliant they actually are, or maybe even just keep them in a job. And then after a chat with Kevin, who linked me in with Tommy, we came up with a bit of a better plan. We brought Tommy to Tayside. I worked Tommy hard and unfortunately I think he's still speaking to me. We managed to do it over two sites, so Nine Wells and Perth Royal Infirmary. We did it over four days, we had 20 sessions and we had 318 participants. The feedback and passion is clearly there for more. And I'm working hard to try and build it into inductions. As they say, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I'm determined. Again, it's that headstrong part of me. Our proud clouds are launching across the surgical floor. Our first one is now in Ward 12, and the other wards are busily completing theirs. My next task is to evaluate if our approach to what matters to you is working, and that it becomes seamlessly embedded into daily practice. I'm not quite sure yet how to do that, but I'm working on it. So what are we doing for this year's celebrations? So we've got a few things up our sleeve and we're working here in Nine Wells and also on the Perth site as well. But we're bringing people together. We're involving our volunteers, our charity choir and our hospital radio. So all I'm going to say is watch this space. So my top tips for what matters to you. The wilder the idea actually, the better. Just go with it. But ask the staff what matters to them. You're going to be pleasantly surprised by the answers. They absolutely hold the key to person-centred care. So embrace it. Be kind to each other. Kill with kindness and watch it spread. It's wonderful. And end silo working. It doesn't work. It does harm. And you don't achieve anything. I met someone only last week who told me their mother's story. That if you wash your hand with only one finger, you won't be able to cover it all. Yet if you wash your hand with all five, if you wash your face with all five fingers, you'll be able to achieve greater things. So it's not always easy, but it is definitely worth it. And if there's any questions at all at any time, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. That's great, Vicky. Thank you very much. And last but not least, our uh, last speaker. Um, over to you, Tommy. I'll let you introduce yourself. Oh, thank you, Kevin, and thank you. It, sorry, thank you, Kevin, and thank you for the the the, the kind words, uh, Victoria. It's been a, it was an absolute privilege to spend time with yourself and Kevin uh, up up in uh, in, in uh, Nine Wells in Perth Royal Infirmary. I'm just going to take a wee second to bring my slides up. I'm hoping everyone can see them OK. So I'm Tommy Whitelaw. I'm the National Lead for Caring and Outreach at the Health and Social Care Alliance Scotland. I was also a full time carer for my kind and beautiful and magnificent mum, Joan, who lived with vascular dementia and cared for my mum at home for five and a half years. Just a little background onto the work I'm going to share. That started a little campaign from my bedroom uh, based on the theory that, that no one ever asked that who my mum was, that 
people had stopped seeing my mum, they'd only would only see dementia and started a little campaign to try and find out how other people managed. That then led on to our You Make a Difference campaign, uh, where thousands and thousands of people from around the world got in touch to share stories of how they met, how they fell in love, their first kiss, uh, the stories of their lives. And, and what stood out about the stories was people, that is people that make a difference. Our next stage of that was uh, travelling around for the, been on this tour for the last nearly seven years across the, the UK and Ireland, uh, mentored a lot by Mr Sean Mayer, who opened today's session, and along the way launched 30,000 What Matters to You pledges, trees, walls and boards, asking teams to create a space where they walk past every day so that everyone can share the things that matter to them on it and use it for team building, camaraderie, reflective practice. Uh, a wee link should be just going into the to, to the chat just now of our latest publication we just launched at the Scottish Parliament in November, uh, sharing partnership work across Social Security Scotland, Ayrshire and Arran, Lothian, Glasgow Health and Social Care Partnership, the Scottish Ambulance Service and others. But the part I've been asked to speak about today is working with a, 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 a young artist called Xu Zhang Leng. These first slides you can see today are called the Colours of Love. We spent some time with residents and care homes, uh, spending time with different pens and colours and asking people to share a colour or a story behind it and about the stories of the people that they loved and went out to donate them, as you'll see, around the country to say thank you. That led on to the next piece of work in, with, in partnership with Glasgow City Health and Social Care Partnership. I managed to do 20 night shifts and 20 day shifts in care homes, hosting workshops, but also just sitting in the room with a wee cup of tea and asking uh, staff to share the things, that, a story about their life, a story about uh, why they work and care, why do you work in this incredible profession? And the silhouettes you can see here, the shapes above the silhouettes. What we then did was collected all these stories and spoke the most common words into a microphone. And these shapes that you can see above the silhouettes are the shapes of the word love. So this is the cards we sat down. We asked people to share the colours, ideas, experiences, images, stories and words. We'll be launching these in the next few weeks. This is a, a, our friend and artist, Zhu Zhang Leng. These are the sound waves that make up the colours that people told us matter to them and the most common words. And each of the care homes will have five of these hanging above the entrance as they walk into work every day. <coughs> Excuse me. Along with a landscape, there's a... a for each of the care homes, there'll be a different Scottish landscape. I can't zoom in on it today, although it looks like grass and trees. If you look very closely, it's all the words that staff wrote on the cards as I'm moving the arrow about. Intertwined through the branches and the grass is all the words that staff told us about why they work in health and social care. So we, this is just some different ways of taking time. And I have to say, as we speak about capturing what matters to you staff, I would put a call out to you all today if you're speaking about person-centred care. What are you doing with people that only work nights? Uh, in one of the conversations in the care home, one of the ladies said to me, 17 and a half years of working night shift, and you're the first person ever to come in to do a session or sit and ask me why I work here. So there's a call out today. What are you doing with colleagues who only work nights. And just to finish uh, on the theme of the art and different ways of collecting these stories, uh, I went to host some sessions in a resource centre in Stirling and through touch, I was sitting spending time with a young lady and she asked her what really mattered to her. And she said, I hope someone falls in love with me one day. That's the key, isn't it? I hope someone falls in love with me today. My heart smiled and cried at the same time, but I got to know the things that were really important. We produced a very short film on this, and I'd just like to finish with the short film today. Oh, 
Before the pandemic, we were open to the community. We had lots of different groups coming in to use the space. We had the cafe open to the public as well. Um, it was quite a bustling, warm, friendly, kind of happy environment. Um, before the painting, um, since COVID came along, it restricted us from the amount of furniture and visual, visual things we have to look at around in the cafe, especially for our service users who do have complex and profound needs. Everywhere in the centre is just magnolia, so it was all a bit bland, so to have something like that is, is, you know, makes a big difference. As, as Tommy described it, quite clinical looking, cold, bare. <laughs> yeah. We had a session with Tommy and staff were really keen to get involved and have um, the mural to sort of, com not commemorate, but to mark the fact that we're moving on from the last couple of years, that we're all coming back together as a team. I came to visit about a month ago to, to do some talks on what matters to you and, and uh, hear stories from the incredible staff who work here and, and people who attend the day centre. And it just started a conversation about a lovely oak tree that used to sit outside. It wasn't just for the centre, but the whole community loved it. Um, and it, it was massive, absolutely massive. But unfortunately it got diseased, and then eventually it, it did have to come down, uh, which is quite sad for the community altogether. And the tree actually brought quite a lot to the, to the building, so to have a tree painted inside the centre means that we can use it all year round. <laughs> We are working with a, a, an artist, an artist in residence, Zhu Zhang Ling, and he volunteered to come and recreate a modern version, a kind of a, 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 a colourised version of the tree, and a wee space for staff to share their stories and pin their stories on. Uh, so the main, uh, the main object in this painting is the oak tree, and the oak tree uh, here represents the uh, staff who are working, uh, working here. So it's a big tree, and the staff is a. Uh, uh, staff are taking care, uh, care of people here. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice that um, somebody has come in and had the inspiration to, to do something like that and hopefully it'll be a talking point for everybody. Uh, what, what we're doing is something that everybody can get involved with and it's, it, it means something, which is, which is nice. I think the tree will mean a lot because we, d we do a lot of nature and garden things and it will help us to identify the different seasons and the changing seasons, but it also gives us something to talk about, um, about our service users and how, the, how we can help them communicate their feelings and their emotions. And one of the problems we have uh, in the busyness of day-to-day -day life is that we don't have time and space to really listen to people understand the things that are important to them. Uh, so I think, uh, I hope, I hope this, uh, through this painting uh, people could uh, uh, know the contributions of the staff and so, uh, so it will encourage people to love each other. So the, 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 the meal. Also there'll be some texture, there'll be little sunlight shapes where, where uh, uh, staff, families, individuals can write little messages of the things that are really important to them and hang it onto the tree and that'll bring more texture. Uh, so we hope that encourages uh, learning a wee bit about each other, a conversation as you're passing by. Uh, yeah, it just helps another form of, of storytelling and really finding out what matters to the people who attend the centre and the people who work at the centre. And when we think about helping people to stay well and to live life well on their own terms, then making a space and giving them time to listen, to understand, and then to work with them to help them achieve their personal goals, their personal outcomes, that's absolutely key to high quality health and care and good well-being, good outcomes. It's also important that we understand as staff that we're also learning uh, from our service users and it's not about us teaching them, they're also teaching us and we, we all work together. And at the moment we're still limiting use to people that we are supporting so it's a lot quieter. Um, so hopefully once we've got the mural up and risk assessments allow we can welcome the public back in.
um, and I just make it make it what it was before, but hopefully even better. Nice one, right? We are we're running a wee bit behind, um, but uh, a huge thank you to all the the guest speakers there. I think everybody will agree with me that was some amazing pieces of work going on, um, and let's continue to build on that. There's been quite a few questions in the chat, so. I'll just hand over to my colleague Sharon and, and see if there's any questions. We can answer a couple and, and then we'll, I'm afraid we'll have to finish up. But what I will say is we will go back in the chat and answer uh, the, the questions and get in touch with people um, about some of the key points they've made. Sharon. Thanks, Kevin. So, yeah, as you said, there's been a few questions in the chat, but I just wondered, given the shortage of time, if there were any live questions if anybody wanted to put their hand up uh, and ask a quick question now and anything that's been put in the chat we will get back to you with an answer um, following today's session but if anybody has any live questions just now that would be great oh there we go uh, Derek bring yourself in just now yeah thanks Shannon thanks to all the presenters firstly um I guess my question kind of stem from the first presentation Danny in terms of I put it in the chat box in terms of the time that staff have in a very busy ward environment to have those really important conversations and I'm just reflecting on that on a personal experience of a, my daughter being a bit really busy ward for a couple of nights what matters to you board had been provided above our bed, but it was never completed. And when I went in to see her a couple of times, I asked if anybody had asked her any of those types of questions. Um, and we had a conversation with the lady in the bed next door and it was the same. And it was very clear time was a, a very pressing issue. So I just wondered how you, you found that in Borders and how you tackled it, if that had become an issue for you. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. And that is a, that's a common theme we've found in the NHS borders as well within the some of the wards uh, that have the old style of what matters to you template, which is the what matters to you with the big blank box. Um, and some of the conversations we're having with staff, exactly what you're saying, Derek, is, you know, we're, we're short staffed. We don't have sometimes time to fill this in, albeit we know it's an important piece of work to do. Um, some of the feedback we've put is, you know, if there's a patient who doesn't have capacity, um, or someone who has disabilities or someone with Alzheimer's, someone who potentially can't fill it themselves, um, potentially kind of relative support that. If you've got, if you're in, in ward yourself and you, you have capacity, potentially giving you as a patient the template with the, even as a laminated sheet of the marker pen and potentially filling it out yourself. Um, so, it, so it's about what you want. And then that could go up on the, on the board behind you after member of the staff just has a, has a look at it to see what's, what's on that and what they need to know. But again, it means we're having to, we're saving time with the nursing cohort rather than having to say, let's carve out time with nurses away from care um, to fill out this template, which obviously does give benefits, but reduces our patients' care elsewhere. And that's something we're looking to test as part of our next test of change within the acute wards. Thanks, Danny. Uh, I'm going to bring in, oh, no, see, I've got to try and pronounce this name, so do forgive me. Uh, there you are. You've just come on from Sheffield. Please tell me how I pronounce your name. It is a beautiful <laughs> name. It's Ilanthi. Ilanthi. Ilanthi, yeah. Thank you for yeah. joining us this afternoon. Well, well thank, thank you, you for, question. Thank you for, thank you for letting me in uh, from England. <laughs> You guys are way ahead of us, way ahead. And um, I appreciate everything that's been presented today and, and thank you for putting the session on. My question is a little bit more strategic, I suppose, in that I think one of the one of the difficulties that I'm finding is trying to make a space for what matters to you um, in extremely busy environments when um, people are worried that this is kind of an additionality, a kind of pink fluffy add-on and I think what I'm trying really hard to do is to think about how I can land this within the organisation particularly um, to make it a cornerstone of everything that we do and try and get that message across that this will save time and it will make people's jobs easier and it will help us to keep you know retain staff etc etc I just wonder if you've got any advice about things that I could try thank you 
Sean, Kevin. Sean, you want me to look good? Yeah, I'm yeah, uh, my top ten spots. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, Anthony, thanks for the question. It's a, this is a really important question. I think it relates back to the example Derek was just given us as well. And, uh, and I popped a little comment in the chat that when this is seen as another job to do, uh, instead of this is the way we do our job, um, then it, it, it will always tend to fall by the wayside. And I think the key around some of that is getting good leadership engagement, good leadership messaging and modelling of the behaviour. So I suppose Victoria's example of um, you know, started to think about well, what does this mean for us? You know, let people in the team experience what it feels like as a an employee of an organisation to feel like uh, to to have the you know a focus on right what's important for us now as a team. Uh, what are the things that really matter that we really want to get done? What how how is it we want to be as a team? Um, and then actually, when you start to do some of that stuff, it becomes not easy, but it becomes easier to start to do and see the importance of doing that in your day to day work as well. It becomes, you know, part of the way we are here type of thing. So for me, that's certainly one thing. That's one thing. I think that's that leadership. When you start to get into this, it's the leadership engagement, modeling, messaging and building it into the way the team itself operates. And then it's almost a natural uh, consequence for the for the for the team to want to do the same with the people that they're providing care and support. Yeah, but just briefly to add to that, I think the key bit as well is, is trying to embed this within within the training as well for you know newly qualified members of staff as well. That's one of the big things we've noticed. Um, kind of older members of staff maybe a wee bit less reluctant, but you know the key bit there is is what Vicky was saying, can kind of embed this and asking asking the teams and the you know the, the staff the, that question makes them more inclined to do it themselves as well. So. A bit of you know the, the training side of things, embedding it within policies and strategies. So I know within Scotland, for example, the patient experience strategies. We've got we've got what matters to you. We've got the care experience improvement model within some of the board's strategies, and that's great to see. Another thing, seeing it in practice as well, and you know as Sean says, giving it the time that it needs is is really important. But it's it's when you know the the, the example Vicky gives is really good. Given you know taking somebody's blood pressure. And, and asking some of these key questions, you know, that's where these, you know, we given these, you know, opportunities to have that space to have these questions is so important, isn't it? Thanks, Kevin. I, I can see we've got two hands up, but I'm very, very mindful that people are already starting to leave because they'll have three o'clock meetings to go to. Can I ask the two that have got their hands up if there was a question you wanted answering, um, if you would kindly put it in the chat and we can get back to you and I'll pass back to yourself Kevin for closing remarks. That's great Sharon thank you very much. Well I don't know about everybody else but I, I think it's been a, a fantastic webinar and, and lots to take from it and um, we're keen to have more of these over the next um, you know few months and, and keen to have one potentially at the end of the year so We'll keep you posted on that, but um, I think it's been fantastic to hear from you know some of the amazing pieces of work going on across Scotland, um, and and it's been great to have you know um, colleagues from from down south and, and all over the UK as well. So, so really nice to see. Um, as I said, huge thanks again. Our next next webinar next month is is volunteering in NHS Scotland, enhancing patient care and making a difference. This will be held on Wednesday the fourteenth of June at two pm. And you'll find more information at our website under the events section. So please go and check that out. Just to reiterate the point, a huge thank you to all our guest speakers. A huge thank you to all the team for getting this organised. As I said, we'll answer all the questions and we'll be in touch. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.